Hi, my name is Jason Clark, and I'm here at South Dakota State University, and today we're going to go over how we're working on improving our corn nitrogen rate recommendations. So let's go ahead and look at some data and see how we can improve them. All right, so first of all, we want to spend a little time on what exactly are nit nitrogen rates looking like in South Dakota. So here in this graph, we're going to see really quickly across 45 different site years what our nitrogen requirements have looked like over the last several years. So we can see here we have quite the range. We have some sites going from zero all the way up to 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So this is quite a variation. The mean of all this is around 96 pounds of N, right here in the middle, is where we're normally hitting for nitrogen requirements in South Dakota. So how do we best predict these nitrogen rates since they're so varying across the state? This is this next part. So traditionally to this point, we've been using what we call a yield goal approach, using a multiplier of 1.2 for, for the amount of nitrogen needed to produce one bushel of corn. So the equation looks a little bit like this. So we have our equation where we have our yield goal and we're gonna say 144 pound bushels of corn for this example. We're gonna have multiply that by our coefficient or a multiplier of 1.2 pounds of N per bushel of corn. We're then gonna go and subtract our soil test nitrogen from our zero to 24 inch sample. Then we're gonna subtract any legume credit we might have if our previous crop was soybean or alfalfa or things of that nature. And if we're recently in no-till no -till within about five years of no-till in that field, often we need to add an extra 30 pounds of N in that field. So this is our field's example. Our nitrogen rate requirements are about 105 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So if you divide that by 46%, which is how much nitrogen is in our urea, we're going to get about 220 pounds of urea per acre that we need to apply to this field. So the next question is, how accurate are we? So let's find out. So to find out how accurate we are, we looked at different research sites, different locations on farmers field throughout South Dakota. The highlighted states you can see here in dark blue are those sites where we have done nitrogen trials in those counties. We've done 45, over the, 45 of them in the, since 2018. 32 of those sites were conventional till, 13 were no till. 35 had soybean as previous crop, so mostly soybean, corn, in this area, and then we had 10 sites where we had a wheat, a corn, or another crop that's preceding our corn crop. So next we're going to learn what the difference was between our recommendation and our actual nitrogen requirement needs. So that's what's on this next graph here. On our y-axis, as you can see right here, we have our pounds of nitrogen per acre. And then we're looking here where we, where we have our sites we in our central region and also these ones over here in our eastern region of the state. So this red line represents our, nit our nitrogen recommendation from SDSU, and then this next line is going to be our actual nitrogen need. What we want is we want these two lines to line up as close as possible. That means we're being very accurate. So we can see here, this blue line shows up. We can see some sites are doing quite well. While others, such as this one right here, there's quite a bit difference between the recommendation and what was needed. But other sites we can see, such as right here, are those sites that did very well as far as our recommendation and what's needed. So we look at just the difference between this red line and blue line to help us see how well we're doing. That's in this next graph here. So we took that nitrogen recommendation, that red line, and subtracted it from our needed nitrogen, that blue line. So if we're at zero, we're right on. It's exactly where we want to be. If we're above the line up in this area, that means we are overestimating how much nitrogen we need. And if we're below it, that means we're underestimating the amount of nitrogen we need for our corn crop. So here, uh, currently, you can see the closer to zero are, the better we are. So overall, we're about plus or minus 67 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So I think there's room some, for some improvement. So how can we improve? And that's this next question we're going to go over next. So if we look at this equation that we've already spent some time on, one of the things that's in, changed over the, over the years is this a coefficient or multiplier 1.2. And where that multiplier comes from, is taking our soil test nitrogen from zero to 24 inches, adding it to what nitrogen we needed from fertilizer. Let's say that's 240 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And then we, sub we divide that by their bushels per acre. If we do that in this instant, we get about 1.2 pounds of N per bushel of corn. So that's what we've been previously, and that's why we use that as a multiplier, but how accurate is that number today? let's look out of this data we have from these 45 locations, we can see here that our y-axis is now our nitrogen coefficient or that multiplier, and we still have our regions and our areas down here on the x-axis. 
So traditionally that average has been here about 1.2, but we're actually seeing across this data we have here, that average is actually much lower, around 0.9 to 1, depending on what region we're in. Now if we want to look at the recommendations based on region and based on this new number, that's what we're going to look at now. So we're going to look at this graph, which is similar to our last one. We're going to look at the difference between the recommendation of, of using 1.2, 1.0, and 0 0.8, and subtracting that from the nitrogen needed in that corn field. So first we're going to look at that 1.2 that we've seen already. Now what we want to see is if we, when we do this 1.0 in blue, does that blue line get closer than the red line to that zero mark, that zero line right here. So if we do that, we see in these sites up here that are overestimating nitrogen needs, we get closer. Those sites that are below the line that are underestimating using 1.2, we're getting farther away from zero, which isn't what we want. So if we do 0 0.8, we see that some of these sites above are getting closer. Some are actually, such as these ones over here, are starting to get below the line, which is not what we want to see. And those ones that are already underestimating are getting even further. So if we then kind of mix this into three different groups, and three different groups, as we'll see on this page right here, we'll see our underestimation, those top 25%, those ones were overestimating the top 25% of those ones, and then the middle 50% of the data to see how we're doing overall. So first of all, we'll look at those ones where we tend to underestimate. So if we change that coefficient, that multiplier from 1.2 to 1 to 0 0.8, you can see that we start going further away from 0. So when we're underestimating, which we tend to do this in drought-conditioned years. A lot of these sites in here were under drought conditions. We get further because it's less efficient of a system. However, when we tend to overestimate, such as these ones here, we change from a coefficient of 1.2 to 1 to 0 0.8, we're starting to get closer to that line, that zero line. And if we look at the middle 50% of our data right here, we can see as we go from 1.2 to 1 to 0 0.8, we're getting closer to around that line. Actually, when we get to 0 0.8, we seem to be a little bit below that line, more average than the 1.0. So we take all this data here together, when we look at it together, that's what we're going to see in this graph. We're going to see as we go from 1.2 to 1 to 0 0.8, we start to go down. We get around this line, around 1.0, and we start to get more below it with 0 0.8. So on average, for 1.2, we're about plus 48 pounds per acre. We are on the blue line, or the 1.0 multiplier, we're plus 13. And then when we get to 0 0.8, we get about minus 22. So we can see we're overestimating overestimating less but still pretty close to zero and now we're starting to underestimate more than we overestimate with the 1.0 so and we're also most of the data is right closer to zero and this data than so with right here so a lot of what this shows us is that that 1.0 might be the most accurate that we can get in our current recommendation system and actually be better than our 1.2 and this isn't something that's changed. That 1.2 hasn't always been 1.2. If we look back in time, we see in 1975 it started at 1.45, decrease, decrease, now in 2022. I'd say based on our data, that 0 0.9 or 1 mark is about right where we want to be. In fact, the recommendations going forward, they said this 1.2 are going to be 1.0. So we're going to take that yield goal, multiply it by 1, subtract our soil test nitrogen, subtract any legume credit, and that it add any no-till debit to it. And as always, thank you for your time, and if you would like to, feel free to follow us on social media to get more of these updates.